Okay, I think I'm ready. Do, do, do. Oh, I'm on the wrong document view. It helps if you can see my screen. Do, do, do. Right. So where do I want to start? Um, so starting point. Starting point. Um, so I've done the barcode scanner and its components. Um, and it has a base station for charging and wireless communications. And then there's a thermal printer um, and it all works fantastically um, the only real element left now is um, what's essentially being called the gift code ATM um, where you'll be able to input gift codes tell the system what brand it is, what value it is, and then I can store them and sort them and you'll have a website interface to see what codes are available from various brands and staff can put the requests in, supervisors can approve it, you go collect it when you're ready to grab them, um, the system handles all the data behind the scenes and keeps tabs on what's being used and how much and who's using what and um, you can generate all your financial reports and tracking and all that kind of stuff um, and not have to do everything on paper. Um, arguably this is the part that I've been looking most forward to um, just because of the I think uniqueness of the challenge trying to design something like this. Um, initially I had found these uh, code hoppers. They're used in kiosk machines. And I found a few assemblies that use these and the common thing is they'll have a bunch of these set up in a row and they'll put uh, not a conveyor belt but uh, essentially a gantry um, slide top that can fit in front of it grab the code as it comes out and move it along and then spit it out to the end user. Uh, they're extendable as well, uh, most self-stack. Um, the one I got actually does not have a mechanism for rejecting codes coming in, uh, so instead it automatically rejects everything coming in. Um, there's some that have a, a solenoid lever so you can either allow it to come in or you can reject it and it drops into a a tray at the back here. Um, what I wanted was to go in and out so I uh, thankfully I was able to take the assembly apart and just modify it so that things can come in and out. Um, and it does work. It uh, works quite well. Um, the only potential issue is who I'm building this for, they get such a variety of codes that this may not be the most effective way to do it because what I would have to do is I likely won't have enough of these hot proofs to sort entirely by brand or entirely by um, value. So there's a potential the code you want is like so this as is holds 180 codes so potentially 180th code is the code you want to dispense. So I either have to move it into another hopper, keep track of where I'm moving it to on the server, 
but also have enough conveyor belts going around that I can move that kind of code number of codes with any amount of speed and this system as is typically it's supposed to be capable of getting up to about a code a second uh, so that's still a couple minutes to get through 180 codes uh, and then you have to run it through a scanner and double check that you're actually grabbing the correct code the idea that somebody I recently was talking to had suggested to me was something like a 3D printer. I'm not sure if I actually have 3D printer assembly open. I think I have a bunch of parts that I've been looking at. Open up an image here. So the idea somebody had kind of given me is why not take something like a 3D printer and obviously instead of a hot end and a table here, on both sides of the printer you essentially have shelving uh, with slots in it and each slot holds one code. And then you have on top of the gantry um, mounted 90 degrees uh, so instead of it sliding the way it is, it would be rotated 90 degrees uh, and still slide along. Uh, you would have something that can reach out, grab the code off, come back down, and spit it onto a conveyor belt. Um, and that would give you the ability to pick from both sides of. So if you imagined um, this assembly rotated, so you're looking from this side um, on both sides of it you could pick codes off um, so essentially it's double sided um, and then obviously you can extend it pretty large with aluminum extrusion um, and then if I need more capacity I can just make another frame assembly and have the conveyor belt keep going along um, and hold a lot more codes that way um, and I feel for the price of it and the potential ease of overall use, it could work very well. Um, so I figured it can't hurt to do a test of it. Um, and I'm almost going to do a full scale test, uh, just not making the gantry overly massive. I'll start with common extrusion sizes just to test it. Um, so I'm not going to get anywhere near the full capacity that I want, but uh, at least I can prove concept can work and work reliably and effectively and then um, I can scale it as needed. Um, my initial test setup I have about a thousand codes uh, which is probably the peak that the charity sees in one month um, so as long as it's got capacity to handle that it should be fine. Um, and like I said, the way this would assemble is um, there'd be one central conveyor belt going between groups of these. Um, so you could uh, easily add on to it if you ever needed to. But it also makes it, by using a lot of off-the-shelf parts, it would make the system potentially a little easier to maintain and repair. Uh, any parts that aren't off the shelf are likely going to be 3D printed, so still the same general concept with that. You can just print new parts and there's various ways to print them if need be. Um, and so I've just been looking at uh, various components that I can use. Um, and the thing I came across uh, the other day, actually, I'm still going to use that image. Uh, nope, that's a library I'm looking at for programming because I've been playing around with stepper motors and how to control them. So if I, I'm looking at this. So, what I want to do in my design is I'm actually going to have these 20 by 40s, but I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees length. Uh, yeah, 90 degrees, so that it's wider than it is long. So 
opposite of what's there. Um, and what I want to do is I'll have something similar to those to allow the tracks to go up and out. So something like these. Uh, so it's a carrier assembly that can sit on those rails and slide up and down. Hello, Frank. And then initially I was trying to think what's kind of the nice way of getting it to go up and down. Um, so the common thing for at least Prusa machines is they have the two stepper motors at the bottom with the, the lead screw. Uh, and that's what makes it go up and down. Um, the only problem with doing the lead screws, in my opinion, is going to be speed. Um, they're not that fast, and at least with Prusa, it doesn't really need to be. Uh, you need the accuracy overall. Um, and in my case, I'll have good accuracy overall, I think. But I think for better speed, I came across this. So what it's doing um, is it's got this really long shaft with the tooth pulley for the belts. And so my thought is to um, on a assembly is have the motor down low, have that same shaft and I'll mount some bearing assemblies so that it's supported and then similar to how it runs a belt through the extrusion um, to pull this hot end back and forth I'll do the same thing but along the height of it and then at the top I can use let me see it let me show it. So on the top of it, what I can use are um, tensioners. And then that way, um, it can sit at the top, and then you'll have a belt going the whole length up and down, but one singular motor causes the whole system to go up and down. Um, and I feel like I should get enough accuracy out of it, but also get really good speed out of it, and should minimize the motors overall, and the, hopefully some complexity with it. Um, the axis across, uh, obviously I'm going to have to rotate the assembly um, 90 degrees, um, and then I'm thinking uh, another axis where it can slide in and out, um, similar to uh, a linear rail, just not going to use a linear rail uh, just because of cost and sizing. Uh, my plan is simply to just use more aluminum extrusion and mount a motor to it. Uh, probably use a uh, a thin stepper motor uh, for sizing. Uh, shouldn't need to be too powerful, but essentially something like this, but not that, uh, where uh, the item that will be grabbing the cards can slide in and out, but be able to reach a set of cards on this side, but a set of cards on this side. But I'll do it from extrusion and the motor will be mounted horizontal to attach the belts around it. And then the item that is going to do the actual grabbing, um, I've been trying to figure out how to do that for like the longest time. Initially I was looking at something like robotic claws uh, that have parallel jaws, but a lot of these open up a huge amount of distance and I don't need that. It would only need to move like a few millimeters, just enough to slide between a set of codes because obviously I don't want to have to make the shelves super big with huge gaps in them to slide something in to go in and grab a code. Um, so I'm thinking 3D print two sets of plates 
one plate is completely stationary and would mount to something like that. I can put a groove in it that an oven can fit on so that you have something rubberish to grab a code. The top plate has the same thing, has something rubberish to hold it. You put uh, pegs or screws or something to help uh, align the two plates on top of each other so they stay parallel. And then to actually actuate it, you can use um, a linear actuator. Uh, a micro linear actuator. Only possible downside to these is um, some of them do come with limit switches built into them, which is kind of nice, so they shut off when they reach their stroke. The only potential issue with that is even at the smallest amount of stroke, that's a fair amount of distance it has to move uh, for it to go on and off. Um, and then you have to also look at the price point of these. The other option, and I've done this for another project, is to build something fully custom. So you can get these geared motors that have these threaded shafts on them, and they work really well. Um, typically the, it's an M4 threaded shaft. Um, various voltages and uh, you can select the RPM on them and I can always cut the shaft down to size and I can build my own limit switches into them um, and they work fairly well but they're also really cheap um, so I'm thinking that is going to be a good way to get the clamping mechanism um, that can be reliable and simple overall. At least that's what I'm hoping. Um, and then the only other aspect will be the main conveyor belt that has to come in and the gantry has to be able to come grab a code off of that and move it to whatever shelf it uh, deems it to belong to. The only other issue is that, so the main conveyor belt would be coming like that. Well, one of the things I'm thinking is the machines should be in a row. Actually, let me get my notepad. And I can go overhead. The main thing I'm thinking is when you're staring at the machine, you would be inputting codes here. So you'd be. There's a screen for the terminal, and you'd be inputting codes into the machine. My thought is to have the machines, so you're looking at the side of the machine, you'd have them all lined up like this. And the reason for that is you could fit more of them, generally, and then if you ever needed to expand the machine, you can simply take apart the side panel and build another machine next to it, or obviously you could build a whole new casing of the machine but you'd very easily be able to add more machines next to it. The only problem is your conveyor belt is essentially traveling like this, and then you'd have the shelving systems right next to uh, all of these machines. So they're essentially double-sided, so you get extra capacity out of a single air assembly. But this conveyor belt is going like that. And I have a code somewhere. I don't think I have any line, which is really annoying. Um, what I do have this piece of foam. So I'll use this as an example. So when it's slotting a code in, it'll be uh, the length ways that I'll, I'll probably end up holding it. So if it's traveling along that conveyor belt like this, that's all fine and dandy. But when it gets inputted in the machine, it's going to be inputted like this, and it now has to go like that and around. I still haven't figured out the best way of how I'm going to want to make that turn. Um, a decent number of gift codes are that plastic PVC. So they have some give in terms of being flexed. So you could potentially do some sort of weird 
HVAC system that moves it. The only problem is some codes are now being swapped out for these fiber cardboard codes. They still flex, but they're not as gentle about it. Um, so I want to avoid flexing them too much. And then, so when the code first comes in, there'll have to be a barcode scanner, because some codes have barcodes, so that's a little easier to manage. Other codes have a magnetic stripe, so you'll have to have a stripe reader. The stripe reader will also be on a, a slide mechanism, because you can only use the read head on a stripe reader every so often, so if code doesn't have that stripe, I ideally want the stripe reader to be out of the way, um, so that uh, I'm not wearing it out unnecessarily. Granted, most readers and even the readers that I found to try and test uh, are relatively cheap, but still, if I can avoid having to do consistent maintenance, I would like to do so. Um, so the one option uh, is some sort of turntable. Um, the only thing I potentially worry about that is general speed. Um, I prefer something that is just constantly moving, uh, like conveyor belts. Um, but it might just have to be that you input the code, it puts some sort of barrier in place so that you can't input another code. So it gives it a few seconds to, to process it. The inputting of codes is not anywhere near as consistent um, in terms of how much is going in. So generally, you probably won't be putting a lot of codes in all at once. Um, so the speed could be slower without overall worry, to be honest. So yeah, some turntable that rotates and spits the code out onto the next conveyor belt isn't too much of an issue. Um, dispensing codes that you want consistent um, and the bonus for that is I don't really have to re-rotate the codes. Um, my plan is that when you're dispensing codes there would be a, essentially a bit of a hopper tray and what you can do is um, it would have a door stopping you from grabbing anything but the codes would drop out onto the platform and I can counterbalance that platform. Uh, so drops off the commuter belt onto that platform and the platform would sink a little and then the next code and so on and so forth. They can just drop a stack of codes. Um, once the codes are done being dispensed, it can open the door and you can grab those codes off the platform. Um, so that's the idea for that. Um, so basically I want to try and create that one full assembly a portion of conveyor belt that can handle um, the loading, uh, the input, and obviously I'd like to build the um, the exit platform for testing. Um, try and do it all in one piece. Initially, I was only just going to test the gantry system, but I realized if I'm going to test the gantry system. It'd be nice to get a full and accurate test and actually have it do all the motions that it need to do. Uh, I feel it would be more accurate and consistent for testing. So I know most of the parts that I'm going to want. Uh, it's just the matter of I want to design it so that I know all the parts to order. Um, I can start mocking up some of the uh, 3D printed parts that I'll need. Some things like these geared motors, uh, their sizing can vary from time to time, so it might be uh, something that I end up waiting for the item to arrive just to confirm its sizing and whatnot. Although this particular listing, it looks like they uh, They've given fairly accurate measurements of everything, which is kind of nice.
So, um, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to move Fusion off my screen because I'm going to upload a bunch of stuff. Uh, view. What I'm going to do is. I'm going to use GrabCAD and load up on items for mounting. Um, so, various items I came across that I want. So, motor plate I'm going to use somewhat often, but there were a few variants I was looking at. There's this one, it's got the slotted holes, but it also has an extra set of holes. I'd be tempted to use that kind of plate. Um, I've been looking at these. Um, actually, this particular plate's nice because it looks like it has the slots for your belt to go through. Some of them don't have it. But also, 28 Gosh darn dollars, oh my gosh. Oh, that's for four of them, okay. That's not too bad, then. That's for four. Yeah, okay. But it's got the slots for belts, which is handy. So I might end up using those, because the more common one... Um, so I'm probably not going to use that bracket. Uh, these are common. Uh, these are much larger plates, uh, which honestly would probably work just as well. Um, I'd have something 3D printed sitting on them, so even these slots can work for the belts. Um, there's this version for the... Um, uh, uh, Ando 3, it looks like it. Uh, they put a crimp on the end. I'm not a fan of that to be honest. Uh, I'd much rather do a 3D printed assembly that can just grip it. Um, but this is just a listing for the belt tensioner, which I already have a generic listing for. Uh, much larger plate uh, for the 2040 stuff. Um, I would be tempted to use this to be honest, uh, just because of the overall size. Um, the price is a little on the high end. Uh, this is the other, so this, I've seen this done but with uh, 3D printing. Um, took me a while to find this particular uh, plate uh, that has them built on. There's another plate version, it's that one, but it doesn't look like it comes with the wheels. Um, interesting that the wheels are worth an extra almost ten dollars. Um, so this is your generic plate that I've seen. Um, but it doesn't have a s oh, so it does. Oh, okay. Silly me, it does have the slots. Um, what's the difference on the other one that I saw? It doesn't look like there is a real difference. Other than, looks like it's designed with a notch in it so that if you did put a plate on top it would sandwich it and stop it from undoing itself but it wouldn't be hard for me to 3D print anything around that anyway so these would be fine and for the price it's much more nicer to be honest um, shipping's a little up there but these things probably weigh a fair bit um, there's this version of a motor mount. I shouldn't need that. Um, all of the ones I need are probably going to be the flat mounts. Uh, robotic arms that I was looking at. Um, yeah. Looks like I didn't leave any of them open. So I was looking at that one. Honestly, think it's the better option, more heavy duty. Uh, let's see if it gives me any suggestions. So it 
shows a few other plate designs. So here's that generic plate. I was looking at it on GrabCAD. Um, probably would work. Um, probably more than suitable, but uh, I am working with 2040 for most of the design, I think. Uh, so the extra mounting probably can't hurt. Um, oh, this is for an idler pulley. Oh, neat. Um, there's a bow to mount. Uh, has all the measurements. That's handy. Um, so I can recreate it if I don't find a, uh, a CAD file for it. Probably lean towards using this just for the added strength. Um, I'm not gonna. Even, I could use that idler pulley plate. The only reason I don't think I want to is going to be um, tensioning. Um, Oh, these are handy. Um, mounting brackets. Um, yeah, these will be handy. Uh, probably use mounting plates. Um, but uh, let's see here. So I'm trying to think. Um, So initially, um, the way the belt was going to run, is at least on the vertical, the belt would be running just within one segment, but on the vertical, both on the gantry arm and on the, the axis. It would probably be going across the whole 2040, wouldn't it? Because there is a, a hole between it, uh, the two segments. Um, so on the vertical, it would be the belt would be going through that hole and then coming out the other side. Um, but I'm wondering with the motor mounting, would it actually come out that way or would it have to go around both segments? This is 2020 extrusion. And then I have 2040. Is it the same person that designed both? Yes, okay, cool. I'm going to download those. Um, your standard mount plates. Um, the wheels. More mounting plates. wondering if the belt is coming up and over or if the belt is going around both segments. The motor would be centered so I have a feeling you'd have to go all the way around. The 
would definitely have to check that you get enough clearance around that belt that you don't start rubbing um, or at least 3D print um, some smoothing spots so that it's not rubbing against the metal. Uh, let me download the XT2040. We're going to go in and grab DXF of the face of them so that I can easily make the links that I want. It's taking a minute to upload. And there we go. Uh, actually, let me do the exporting first. Uh,
have DXF files. So the best way to start is probably Sizing is right. Forty millimeters. Okay, cool. So it should be forty by twenty. Yeah. Okay. Let's set it as one hundred millimeters. Um. No, what? Let's do it two hundred. We got ourselves a 200 millimeter beam, and if motor is attached here, so your sprocket would be here. Yeah, it would be going around both ends. Initially, I was thinking the uh, the um, belt would be going through just the two sections. Um, Hmm. There's really no way around that either. Not in the method that I want to mount the motor. Unless you design a custom bracket to offset the motor. Now the only thing I think that would affect it is making sure that I can tension it properly. Um, which would come down to belt tension. Because essentially what I'm doing is, if I look at these, if you look at the images, I'm doing something very similar to this, where it's got the belt running in it, um, but that's how they're running it like that. Now, this one is for 2040 but it only looks like it offsets it. Um, but it offsets it so that the belt is passing through that center section. Um, I do like this version more because it has the double clamping versus this where it's only clamped on the one side. Um, But the issue would be, I would have to offset the motor. Oh, here we go. Or, I could use something like this. So this would keep the belt centered. Oh, no, that doesn't work because it runs along that length, um, which is not the length I'm using. Um, we 
Wait, what's this one? Images. How does this one align? So that's 40. Yeah. So the way I need to tension is I need the pulley in this direction. Opposite of that, yeah. Let's see. So if they're using that offset for tensioning. Under three model plate. Let's see how they do the motor then. So you have that. This is what we want. I think. That's a the printed part, which is fine. I'm just curious if there's a, an off the shelf part for it. Yeah, so it looks like it just uses a standard motor plate. like it has an offset. It's a really terrible image. So yeah, so it's going through the one section. So it's definitely an offset motor plate. Yeah, see? It's an offset motor plate. Hmm. Yeah, that should work for my use case. So with that, I can use that offset tensioner. Yeah. 
And fantastic, there's a 3D model for it. Stop opening those windows there. Open the bracket and belt touch. doing that. Oh, many programs are not optimized for multiple screens or the fact that I want to keep things off screen. Okay, those are uploaded. So. Oh. It. Damn. Uh, it looks like I can't process the solid part. That is very annoying. I have a feeling I might have to use one of these 3D printable versions. Uh, a common complaint online seems to be that um, those plates warp.
finding good off the shelf options for this. So, looks like custom 3D prints it will be. Which there are a dime a dozen by the looks of it. Finding uh, models, a lot of them are STL based. Just not what I want. Just realized. Uh, what was it? A few of these are basically mimicking this thing, but some of them actually mount the side of it. Um, well, it's because this is rotated on the flat side. If it wasn't rotated in that direction it'd be fine. Um, Close to what I want.
trying to see if I can find a reliable source for that motor plate. It doesn't seem to be a commonly used item anymore. Which is weird, considering how popular those tensioners are. Oh, I think I found it. Still have a feeling I'd end up designing something to be 3D printed for it instead, to be honest. Let's delete that. And then I can go back into GrabCAD, refine that file. They did upload. Oh, it can't be that easy. Apparently, you can just change the file ending and it can open in step format. Let's try opening it. I'd be very impressed if this actually worked. Yeah, I didn't think it would work. No, that's not gonna work. Yeah, it looks like what I'll have to do is load it. copy of it. Let's do that. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, download. So let's load it in a mesh format. And upload.
Let's see. Editable. Can I project? Nope. Is very annoying. I can't even project off of that. Um, If I can get lucky, uh, mesh. Uh, combine, group, remesh, reduce, plain cut, shell, combine, move, copy, scale. Let's exit the sketch menu. Let's just see what it does. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's going to complain about something. Why not? Ooh, did that work? actually worked. Is it going to allow me to combine faces or not? Uh, it's not going to like it. Yeah. Did I just freeze it? Yeah, I just froze it. Lovely. See if it unfreezes or not. At least in this format, I'd be able to uh, use the project tool, start a new body for it.
YouTube really going playing music through YouTube and it's stalling on me, which is very annoying. It's probably gonna be one of those uh, I'm not gonna work until you completely restart Chrome kind of refreshes. Um, thankfully, I'm using OBS, so if I did restart Chrome, it should keep everything running. Let's reopen Fusion 360. Close. The really fancy convert it uh, requires they have the paid version. So I'm just gonna do that convert that I did before. But that rather than deleting faces and trying to combine things, what I'm gonna do. Restarting Chrome. There we go. Get my message box back in its spot. Yeah, it couldn't possibly be the fact that I have so many windows open. <laughs> I think the one thing has uh, 50 tabs in it just for uh, um, all the things I'm looking at on GrabCAD and uh, AliExpress.
That's gonna take it a minute because of all the lines it's gonna redraw. Oh, nice. That worked really well, actually. Surprisingly. Uh, extrude. I think it's a three millimeter plate. Dirty. What? There ain't no way. That'd be a huge chunk of metal. Yeah, it's three millimeters thick. Lots of options for mounting uh, the tensioners, but uh, not a lot of um, options for the motor mounts. Oh, this is way too big. This is probably why it's having trouble rendering it. That alone is 35 millimeters. 
That is huge. So that should be there to there. It's supposed to be thirty one. So it's a hundred times bigger? Yeah, I think it's a hundred times bigger. So you know what? I'm gonna extrude that. I'm gonna extrude it to 30. be very tempted to do a lot of these corners. Just to get rid of the lines and whatnot, because it's causing it trouble to render. Um let's scale it first. Uh, solid modify scale Fusion is not liking me today. My goodness. Hard to do work when it keeps crashing.
So, uh, 0 0.1. Right. Yes, it is. That's the size it's supposed to be. I know they've been doing updates to Fusion, but my goodness, this is slower than normal. This is part of why I want to smoothen out the design so it doesn't have all these uh, indexes. So it clearly doesn't like them. Not running that hard. CPU is only at 30%, and less than half my memory is being used. Split between Chrome and Fusion. So, it's not even touching the network. Majority of my network is being used up by. Uh, OBS at uh, 5 megabits per second. Is it mega or...? Ah, yeah, megabits. Capital B would meg be megabytes. I crashed it again. <laughs> oh. Never had fusion be this ridiculous. My gosh. Well, rather than trying to do that, can I... Yeah, I 
can't find the centers of any of that. Let's try this. Uh, look at all those splines. I'll have to leave that one till later, till I get the curves on both ends so that I can actually delete them. Otherwise it would delete that point there, I wouldn't be able to know where the curve is supposed to be.
for feeling the center point of the circle. It's right in there. Pretty much. So, create point there. Make another point right there. That doesn't look centered. So this line here goes up to there. supposed to be there. Yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. So that point is in the right spot. That means I should be able to delete all this. And now I can rebuild it.
There we go. And then need to clear that off and put a line there. With this segment and singular line there. Oh, and then the last one is this big circle. Need to figure out where the center of it is. I don't think that's the center point. What's the sizing of this? 30. Oh, I'm still working on the large scale version. Wow. Oh. Need to scale it. Still. That's why everything's so big. <laughs> Honestly, it probably makes it easier to work on because look how close these are. If I had to scale it down before it's done, probably be worse. Probably why it um, was crashing on me. Bad enough that there's a large number of. It's normally 22, so. It was probably 22.8 to 228. No. It's definitely not 228. 238. Now, how far over is it here? Not by much, so it's going to be 240. So then it's just a matter of having it in position. To do that, let's snap it here to 10. Pretty on. Yeah, that's in place. Are we looking? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's in place. So put a point. And let's delete it for now. Save that. Yeah. Let's scale it. Two point one. Two 
pink millimeters. And no unnecessary faceting. Now the zero point. It's way down here. Design history. Where'd the design tree go? Oh, there it is. Move that, move that. That's the only thing this file should have, and I can make it. Oh, I need to save it first. Save. Read only. You can have a maximum of 10 items in the free version. Uh, open for editing. And I pretty much just try to keep it as low as I can until I actually need something. Otherwise I have to figure out which folder it has the open items. So if I go back to this, what I can do is import and let's move. Position. From there to there, 6.3 millimeters. And 
it's aligned. Cool. Uh, six point. Six point three. Let's move this up five. Yeah, let's go eight. So that'll put that motor plate like that. And that means the pulley goes through the twenty twenty and up on the edge here. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm so silly. <laughs> the reason this doesn't matter <laughs> is because the motor has to sit offset from this for the simple fact that I'm putting the coupler that handles any slight misalignments in, I'm putting a threaded rod in place. That assembly mounts to a separate slot. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All that work and I don't even need that part. Well, I'll keep it in my <laughs> file. Uh, oh my goodness. I'm silly. So let's delete that. Um, to start, let's move. So we'll create a copy and let's move this 200 millimeters. And then from there, we need the frame. How do I want to do the frame? Uh, I feel like I'm going to want a 2020 going across. Gantry on the front. Tensioners on the top. So just 2020 on the back or in between. Um, let's put the tensioners in place.
interesting uh, assembly because you're already getting interference there. have a really tight T nut in there you'd almost want to do an offset cut on the uh, extrusion So we have that assembly. Yeah, so if that's there, you're probably looking at the back brace going behind. You're going to want a brace there when it's moving up and down. It's uh, going to want the bracing in place. I'm looking for, oh right, 20, 40, actually let's do 20,
65 by 65 for millimeter. That looks like a good option. Uh, let's see. Uh, take some measurements. Sixty-five point five. I think we have the item I'm looking for. Download. Upload that plate. And then the other thing I need are the wheels. Not gonna let me open it. It's <sighs> very annoying. You upload it in a format almost no one can actually use. That should work.
PDF? What? Content of file is corrupted. That's uh, useless. <laughs> Doesn't tell me anything. Corrupted? Okay. Doesn't help me. Can Free Cat open it? No, it can't. Okay, so there is a problem with it. Here we go. Yep, that's what I want. Hmm, I'm just realizing something. If I'm sliding back and forth to grab things, but I come down to grab a code that I need to place on a shelf, that code would need to be... So if I switch my camera view for a minute here. So say this is the, the plate, so it comes in uh, it comes in between the two posts. So you have, say, two posts. Code comes in on a conveyor belt. If it stops here, the entry comes down, picks it up, moves it to a spot, slots it into the place. If I want it to go on this side, I would probably stop the code here, grab the code, and go up and move it. Only problem is that conveyor belt. <laughs> I would have to put a gap in between that conveyor belt so that the gantry can either come down and be level with it or I'd have to essentially flip the gantry so that the part that's grabbing the card can fit between the conveyor belt so that can belt can just be continuous and I'm thinking that's going to be my option. Yeah. I'm thinking it might make more sense to have the gantry come down between it rather than having a gap and then running belts or whatever or extra motors when I could just have a continuous belt. Um, and then for the stop points, do I put 
individualized servos in where it just stops the code because if I had if I'm funneling a bunch of codes then I can have a code going to one tray the next codes oh, just hit my microphone but um, I have one code uh, going to like say one tower the next code goes to the next tower and the next one goes to the next tower so I can stop them sequentially and place them and remove the blocks hmm that'd be an interesting one either that or you just solely rely on sensors to know when it's there stop the belt grab it and move again but it might slow it down but yeah so my initial thought with the gantry I'm gonna have to flip the assembly so that I can actually grab the code out of that conveyor but uh, let's insert the gantry plate So gantry fits like that and I'm going to make a new component and Let's see axis Totally spell checking that wrong. Uh,
Hello, Keith. Oh, totally have the wrong uh, view on my camera. Kind of helps if people can actually see what I'm working on. <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't had that view for too long. Um, well, I spent forever trying to fix a file, um, this bracket, uh, for a motor, uh, only to realize that, uh, which it crashed Fusion, like, three times, um, only to then realize that I don't need that specialized bracket, I can use a generic one. The reason for that bracket is so, the way this tensioner works, is your belt would go from the outside here of this 2040 down the inside of it. Your generic motor mounts can fit the slots here and here which puts your center of your motor pulley right here which would mean you'd expect your belt to go from the outside to outside. Um, which obviously can't do so there is a, a bracket you can buy which apparently it bends very often so people have designed really beefed up 3d printed ones but uh, I couldn't find a, a non STL version so I would probably just end up designing my own but uh, it's all a moot point because um, the way I plan to set up the motor to run the this is your Z axis so this goes up and down is the motor will be here it will um found um i got this idea from what was it Let's see if i can find the item kind of got this idea from another item because i was trying to think how can i have decent speed but also enough accuracy for my use um I didn't want to use ball screws and whatnot, um, and I thought belts would just be fairly easily. Um, so I found this, and what it's doing is it's got that uh, coupler, and then it's got a really long shaft. Um, and I don't like how it's doing the tensioning there, but um, I'm going to essentially copy that uh, kind of idea. Um, where the motor will be here, I'll build a base out of extrusion, have it mount on a generic plate, and I can just slide the plate and not have to use this bracket, uh, because this bracket is harder to find these days, uh, for whatever reason, whereas the generic bracket is really easy to get. Um, put the coupler in place, and then oh, I'm going to put some bearings on that shaft, and then have the uh, uh, have it line up the belt, um, and that way I can go up and down very easily. So it's just putting together this gantry plate. figure out a good way to mount this. Yeah, they so you can get these tensioners for 2020 as well. Um, yeah, so it's not impossible to do uh, and they have 
think motor mounts for it as well on AliExpress. But I was mainly looking at using 2040 for mine. I want to kind of beef it up. Granted, this is only a 200 by 200 section right here. Uh, uh, just for prototyping, I'm going to stay on the slightly smaller side, but generic sizing. Um, if it works, which I'm kind of expecting it will, then I can scale everything up. Um, and there will be likely more than one of these towers. Um, so this is the mechanism that will hold the codes. Um, so what will happen is there will be a piece going across and then it will have the ability to uh, reach out onto shelves that would be on this side and this side. And those shelves would have slots for the codes to fit in. So the gantry moves, grabs it, pulls it back, drops down, and then moves it along a conveyor belt. Um, and so it will allow double-sided loading. And then uh, if you need more space, or depending on how you decide to organize things, you can both increase the size of the gantry, um, but trying to keep the machine a decent size overall so what I'll probably do is have more than one set of gantries um, and then so the main conveyor belt just leads between the different gantries Yes, gift cards. Yeah, exactly. I bought a, a thousand generic blank codes for my testing, plus a redo vidu so I can. Um, I'm gonna get a sample set of. Um, A sample set of um, oh, what do you call it? Um, of gift codes and take the data off them, um, and then from there, I will um, modify the data slightly so that I can build more codes and generic numbers for them, uh, and that way. I'll be able to run them through the machine. Otis. The only Otis I know is the person that helped create the elevator and escalators. And the Brooklyn Bridge, I think. Digital inspection system. Yeah, I'm just going to be scanning the um, uh, the barcodes on them and magnetic stripe. But ideally, you use the codes that have uh, barcodes. <laughs> Um, let's see. Calculator. That's what I'm looking for. 
Uh, no, not gonna use a vacuum. Uh, initially I was thinking it'd be neat, but uh, in terms of um, general speed, um, uh, not speed, space, uh, it'd be kind of hard to have a big, think of like the old um, CD deck stackers. Um, uh, where you had slots to hold all your CDs nicely. Essentially something like that, but give it just slightly more space so that um, what I was uh, kind of looking at for inspiration were things like uh, parallel robotic arms uh, where it can essentially clamp. Uh, there's a few one of these that are really cheap and could be fun to play around with, but um, they open their jaws way too wide, um, so instead, on the gantry plate, uh, on this gantry plate, uh, the one that goes across, I'll have a static portion that just obviously doesn't move, um, and then on the end of it, where it would be grabbing a card, I'll put some notches so that I can put a, an o-ring around it. Uh, to give it something rubbery to help hold the codes and then I'll build a second plate and then um, you can get linear actuators but for a better price point uh, and the fact that most even the miniature um, linear actuators they have quite the um, the spread on them um, so instead I'm going to use something like these uh, these mini um, gear motors. Uh, I've done this before actually uh, and you can build your own uh, linear actuator out of them uh, and that way I can just go up to the height that I want on the gantry will be another axis and it can extend out, clamp on the code, pull it back and go to its homing spot and drop it on the conveyor belt. the wheels centered. Still got ways to go. Uh, let me double check that. Is it 9.8 or 9.08? Mm. That's 10. So let's try that. No, so each shelf would only have one code. That's why it won't need rollers or anything. So it'd be a bunch of slots. Um, because initially I was looking at, uh, uh, it's a kiosk dispensing unit. Um, and it holds about 180 codes. But the reason I was, somebody put me onto this idea was that this could essentially be faster because each code would have an indexed slot and you know exactly where it is and what code it is. Uh, whereas if it's in a hopper, you have to cycle through each code and then you have to run that code through the reader, make sure you were right and that 
it is correct. If it's not, then now you're cycling the machine to find where it went and to fix your ordering. Whereas with this, if it's not in the correct slot, then recalibrate where the gantry is, because clearly it went to the wrong spot. Um, but, uh, yeah. No. It, it, each slot would be its own code. But I can see how you would make that distinction. That's what initially what I was like, uh, I'm not sure that would work. <laughs> but yeah, if it's its own slot, I think it can work. Spot a sack. Yep, that's a place. So, there's that. And then... Yeah, uh, someone else I know is actually flying around with free care right now and they're having uh, some serious fun with it. Um, I poke around at it every once in a while. It is uh, it is not an easy thing to get into, that's for sure. Which is why I'm, I'm doing this project in Fusion. <laughs> What I need is I need a piece of twenty twenty to go across, and then think I'm gonna want a piece of twenty twenty to go between. Um, 
let's do the easy stuff for the moment. Um, put a line there. Uh, actually, no. Let's put a plane there. Trying to insert uh, DXF is what I want. What's the wrong select tool? Uh, for this example, I, these 20 by 40 are 200 millimeters right now. Um, in the final version, it's probably going to be much larger. This isn't going to give you much space at all. I might even spread these out more even for this test project because that's a that's not a lot of distance. Um, yeah, I'd be curious, because uh, you have to have space for the codes coming in, and then space for the codes next to it, and then going up. One of the big things I'm wondering is the space of... Um, finding the optimal space that I can go out, grab a code, pull it in, make sure that it can come back far enough that the code won't hit other codes on its way down, but not be too far out that the back end of it starts hitting the other set of codes, but it also needs to be able to reach out far enough to grab the code. Um, yeah. So I've been debating if I use a moto setup similar to like this where it's reaching out and just 
sliding along to so like if you pictured instead of picturing it like that you picture it like this uh, really so it was like this so this would come out and it would have a piece off the end of it and that's what would grab the code and then pull itself back I'm wondering if that's gonna be too large and also it's it'd be a decent ish amount of weight considering you're only moving a piece of plastic that's like a couple grams <laughs> or if I'm better off with essentially a linear actuator where you set up two sets of assemblies that can pull the code uh, even then I'm not sure it would work unless you put the you had something sliding but you put a set of actuators on the actual plate so that it can slide out and then that actuator can go even further to cover any extra distance maybe and that way even if it's pulled back all this way holding the code in front of it um, you'd have extra space because that actuator would pull itself in Yeah, there's two things that have been kind of I've been playing it over in my brain for a while is that mechanism of how do you reach out and grab a code but also reach out to the backside and grab a code and then the other aspect is so ideally I want to set up the machine so that there's a bunch of these right next to each other in one long conveyor belt and the reason for that is as a user you'd be staring at it like this the way it is on screen um, and it overall I feel like that would take up less space but if you needed to increase capacity you could take the panel off the machine and extend it and put more modules and you just extend the conveyor belt system the one part I still haven't figured out is if you're inserting the code in the machine from this angle while the conveyor belt is going the opposite direction so you have to turn that code around um, to fit on that conveyor belt um, and I'm thinking the easiest way to do it is just to be is going to be just to build a, uh, a turntable um, it'd be on the slightly slower side but you honestly probably wouldn't notice it um, simply because um, you'd want to take a moment to check the codes as you're inserting them and we don't typically insert that many codes in quick succession so it wouldn't be too much of a problem if it's slightly slower it's the exiting speed that you would really want to pay attention to and that's not hard if it's one central conveyor belt you just keep dropping codes on it and let them move along but uh, let's finish this One thing I'm noticing is this gantry plate sits really close to that. Is this even designed for bolts to go on the backside? I just feel like you wouldn't even be able to get them to fit. Like, 
you can obviously get a T-nut on that. They put the oversized holes for tensioning on that spot as well, which is kind of annoying. Um, although, to be granted, for gantry use, you may end up moving that. Yeah, if I get the general design down, I can order parts and figure out what fits and doesn't fit when it arrives and make adjustments. I'll probably start with testing it with the uh, the 3D printer power board that I have. Um, but uh, very quickly I'll overuse that thing because it's got a it's got enough slots to run some motors and I've bypassed it to run a few sensors on it but uh, to fully test this system I would really want uh, a custom circuit board built for it. Uh, let's get another gantry in place. That's not right. That is the wrong type. Interesting. I need a different gantry plate for that. Good to know. Okay, uh, let's find a larger version gantry plate. But I already know I'd have to build an offset for this plate so that you can actually screw the thing to it.
that's the common one I've seen. Finding parts on GrabCAD, but I'm always uh, double checking options on AliExpress to make sure that I'm finding the right stuff. this Yeah, I think I think we're thinking similar things, Keith. I think so. Let me add this. I'm totally gonna need to make this uh, bigger. <laughs> For a test, this is gonna need to be far bigger. <laughs> this is already. Uh, I mean, you gotta move it one. <laughs> Bloop. <laughs> um, for this test. Yes, it's over engineering, but for the final machine, not even close. Um, the reason being is I've got over a thousand codes to handle. And more than likely with the machine, it's not going to be as wide, it's going to be tall. This is meant to test small scale idea. So yes, it's over engineered, but the final version is gonna need to be much larger. And I'm gonna need to spread this out more because ideally I'm thinking, so let's see, if I, Calculator. If I did it with five codes wide, five. So if it's five codes wide, fifty codes tall, that's two hundred and fifty codes on one panel. 
times two, so those 500 codes. So two of these assemblies, I think, will be fine for the first machine. Maybe do a third one, but I'm thinking at least two uh, for whatever gets designed. And then a code, size of a code is... So code is about 55 millimeters wide, plus you want space between codes, so 70 millimeters total, and the code is centered. So 70 times 5 is 350 millimeters wide. So this distance between plates would need to be probably closer to 400 is what I would want and then if you go height um, pull up my wallet don't have the codes at my desk uh, but if we look at height a code is very thin uh, it's just under a millimeter but you would need space for the grabber to come in and actually grab it. So you're looking at probably anywhere between 10 to 20 millimeters. So let's say 20 millimeters by 50. Nah, it's a meter. <laughs> That's a little tall. Um, yeah, if it got to that size, then yeah, I'd be looking at more systems or going wider but if I want five rows of codes this is almost 400 millimeters um, which I might do that on this test um, rather than go for the height go for the width height is a lot easier to add long term for testing um, so yeah 400 should be a decent sized machine. Uh, do I have my tape measure at my desk? I don't think I do. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. 100 millimeters. That's 15 inches. Oh yeah. I could definitely go bigger on depth. Because uh, you'd be looking at it from the front of the machine would actually be this way. Um, yes, yes it will. It grabs it off the conveyor belt and puts it on in the slot. Um, So I can probably get away with double the depth. So 800 millimeters. And uh, no, that's 30 inches. That'd be pushing it. Uh, let's see. 100 is Probably get to about 600, which uh, can I do 700? Be pushing it because fitting that all on the machine. That's almost 28 inches. Making the machine 30 inches is kind of pushing it, especially for tolerances and stuff. And I want to design it so that you can slide the assembly out and actually access everything for maintenance. So, 
CAD lean towards 600, which would be 70 times. Yeah, so I could do eight slots uh, on the depth. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, essentially. Uh, can I get away with a nine? Yeah, no, eight's better. Um, which isn't bad. That'd be possible. I actually hadn't thought of that. Now the only problem with that is it either have to move really slowly or you'd have to make sure that the slot itself had some extra rubber in place to kind of almost need friction there to make sure the car doesn't want to slide out. But then it also means the gripper needs more strength to pull the card back out. Unless you did it two ways. You built the rack so that it can slide. But then internal to the rack, um, yeah, it could. But initially I was thinking that it would almost be like a half slot. So the card is sticking out a distance. Uh, just to make it easier for the gripper to get in. Um, but the other option would be you have... Um, I don't know if you guys have it over in Australia. There's a game here called Connect 4 uh, where you drop pieces in. Um, and on the bottom it's got a, a piece that slides to let all the pieces fall out the bottom. Do something similar to that where on the back end there's a a whole segment of uh, grippers but they're all connected as one piece and you release that when you want to grab a code and then when you need to move again you clamp all the codes and you can move and even if nothing's being done you would probably keep that clamped uh, just in case the machine gets bumped or something you'd probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have sensors in the machine to detect that, to be honest. Somebody came along and bumped it, which your idea of having a front lip on it would probably be good. Yeah. So having the front lip actually is a good idea to stop a code from falling out. But then it means you also need more space on height because you'll have to lift up slightly to overcome that. You'll have to go in, grab, lift up slightly, and come back out. Although, no it wouldn't. And the reason why is so because the conveyor belt is down here, uh, I was discussing this before, just before you had come in, was um, because the conveyor belt would be here, initially I was going to have the gantry plate on the top. Only problem with that, um, only problem with that is that um, if it wanted to come down, it would hit the conveyor belt. So instead, I'm going to mount the plate upside down so that whatever gripper is here can. F it, I'll have to make it skinny enough that it can drop in between that conveyor belt to grab the code and go back up and that way I don't have to put any sort of uh, gap in the conveyor belt or anything um, I can simply just drop right in between it grab the code and go back to doing my business and the next code can go to the next gantry so yeah if I do eight code yeah okay. so yeah I'll probably double the width of this for testing um, and do four codes slots and then probably just keep the height mm, maybe go slightly higher for testing but probably not it'll be more than enough for testing but this is too short of a width for testing that is very evident <laughs> and this is why I like 3D modeling you get a 
decent visual representation. But because the gantry would be like this, I can actually, and because the static portion of the gripper would essentially be plate level, or slightly below plate level, and the part that's moving is the bottom plate to grab the card, you can have it slightly higher than that edge lip. And then all I would have to do is, as it's clamping down, it would cause it to lift the card. So you wouldn't even have to move the motors or anything, it would just be lifting as it's grabbing. So it'd all be automatic, but that lip would help stop stuff getting shuffled. Might still put a few uh, laser sensors in just to keep an eye on anything falling out of place, but I can run tests when I have something built kind of see how it responds. Um, right. Oh, I need the wheels on this. Um, which set of plates holes get used for this? Um, That one? Probably that one. Yeah. Yeah, just the edges. Ah, I love problem solving. <laughs> this is why I wanted to live stream this. Because this the engineering to this to me is just I think it's such a unique case to build something for. I just, ah, oh, I think it's, oh yeah, speaking of camera sliders, that's what I wanted to do, I've left space for it, but I, I just, I haven't really had the time to design it or auto parts and whatnot, but my thought is to have a gantry along the edge of my bench so that the webcam could move the whole distance and I can nicely build up all the diagnostic equipment and whatnot and I'd be able to go along and show the various elements and even better, you put two webcams, one pointing at the test equipment, one pointing down at the bench, and I can do the picture-in-picture picture and show the whole thing as I move along working on things. But uh, that'll be a, a down-the-line eventuality kind of project. put in some wheels. Yeah, I fully expect I'm going to have uh, some cable chains on this. I think it'll just make things neater. Don't want to have to be constantly servicing it. Uh, not entirely sure if the full thing will get built this year, uh, just budget-wise. But I can 
very likely get the uh, initial version done which is going to be this version where I can show the proof of concept behind it um, the touch screen and computer for the terminal that's going to be on the machine that I already have in stock and on the bench uh, it's already flashed and ready to go it uh, auto boots into kiosk mode and all the vulnerabilities have already been patched and whatnot um, the system might still need a keyboard and if it does I will uh, build a custom one because uh, part of the security factors for kiosk mode is the use of alt keys and there's a few other keys in combinations that you can use to bypass um, which are very annoying took me a while to figure them out um, but yeah I think it was these set of wheels here that need it.
puppy. So I want to do. This is currently one thirty four point five. Eight hundred millimeter twenty forty extrusion for twenty three bucks? Really? I was totally expecting that to be more expensive. But eight hundred millimeters would put a limit on my depth. Um Yeah, that'd be a problem. Cause if my distance between that and that were just give me one second there Keith um, so if I want if I wanted it to be 560 what's the distance from here that is 65.5 So if I did it with five times two, that's another hundred and thirty with five sixty. And you'd probably lose a few slots because of the conveyor. Uh but you can make it up in height I think especially if I'm going eight slots wide um, and even for the fact that um, you would have to go wider uh, not wider uh, taller because you'd still have to lift it up out of the conveyor belt uh, because the grabber would be dropping between the slots. Um, but, uh, let's see here. So, 690. Ah, that will actually work. Oh my goodness. This one seller wants $41 for 800mm. That's not even the anodized weird. That's impressive. Oh, because the other one's 49% off. <laughs> Either way, that is very handy. Oh, this seller sells up to the, the 1 meter stuff. Uh, that's in the 2020. Uh, Oh, they sell it with, uh... What in the world? 2020V. I probably need to check which stuff I have. Uh, or is it just the... Oh, it's the internal screw is different. Uh, I think everything else is the same. the same? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So it's just the uh, diameter of the screw hole. But, uh, 2040 and the 1 meter length. Okay, cool.
Um, okay, so I can pull off my my want for extending this up to the, uh, the eight bays that I potentially want it to support. So I'm good. Uh, feel free to state what your interesting idea is while I uh, work on expanding this. Oh, locally? Oh, I can find a local price. Hold on. Um, There's actually a company local. Um, I almost guarantee you it's going to be more money. So 2020 square two pack at one meters is $44. Not including shipping. Whereas on AliExpress, this one seller has 2020. Uh, now, granted, it's 35. That piece is $35, um, and that's for one singular piece. So yeah, in that sense, it's a it's a better price. Um, but yeah, taxes and whatnot, and you add the multiple pieces, it'll, it'll be cheaper from AliExpress, and AliExpress has a much um, larger uh, selection available. Do they even have 2040? See the 2020 stuff? I see 4040, 2080. That's about it. They do not have much, if any, of a selection. Yeah, shipping can be very hit or miss for things. I think two-sided is enough. Trying to add another axis, I think, would just be overcomplicating it, and you gotta make sure you know where your wiring is, and you're not bunching something up. Um, right, I wanted to set this distance. Um, 280 millimeters between these. that separately okay uh, that one and that one so if I move this Give me the space that I want. 284. Now, granted, I still have to account for the width of this plate. Over the 
switch there, that's an extra 150. So I, how long is this? 265.5. Let's try that. Fifty. Move this. Should probably make this taller to be honest. Uh, let's see here. Let's move these. I think I made this 200 tall. Um, but let's change it. How tall did I make this? This is 200, yeah. Uh, do I really want to make it that tall for a test bench? Probably overkill, to be honest. Uh, let's go 100. Because I want to be able to fit the, the conveyor in. Uh, and, yeah, so. Initially, I was just thinking, oh, I'll just test the gantry and have a couple slots and I can test it pulling codes in and out. But I realized for a good proper test, I'm just better off um, designing the mechanism where I can just I can put a code in, takes the code, scans it, rotates it, puts it on the conveyor belt. Once it's on the conveyor belt, it puts it into a slot and then in code I can have a button to just redispense it because um, uh, I'm not sure uh, how budget will look overall for building out the whole machine and all the circuit boards and everything but if I can have a test then I can price everything out and I can design the circuit board and I can have a budget to showcase to the client um, so I don't want to go too nuts, but I want to be able to convey enough. So yeah, let's move this up another hundred. Let's get this gantry into place. I loved Meccano sets back in the day. Although, granted, I always preferred the the Lego, Lego Technica stuff. 
Meccano stuff was fine, but I found, because uh, I actually played with things fairly often, um, they wouldn't last anywhere near as long. The metal would fatigue and I'd lose the nuts and bolts and yeah. I always ended up preferring the uh, Lego stuff. At least with the Lego, I always had surplus lying around. Um, the reason being is so, uh, I'm thinking that another assembly like this, um, initially I was thinking something like, what is it? Initially I was thinking something like this, but it's, it's going to be heavy and it's absolutely overkill would get mounted to it, but I'm thinking a similar thing of that but with the, the extrusion would mount to this and that's what slides back and forth uh, for grabbing the, the codes and then you have your um, actuator to the pull the, um, uh, the, the sandwich together Yeah, if you're only grabbing stuff off the one side, sure, rather than the thing there, but because uh, I'm going to grab it on both sides, it just makes more sense. So, there's that. Um... leaves me with
looks like some of the items I want for uh, design don't exist. Uh, at least not in GrabCAD, so I'd have to design them myself. Uh, so the one thing I'm thinking is to move this gantry back and forth. The easiest option is going to be found them earlier and I totally discounted them not thinking I was going to need them but I actually do because of the placement of the bar I guess if I rotated the bar it would work but the reason I put the bar like this was because um, I wanted a larger plate for this axis because it has to be able to extend out and grab the codes. Um, but I still haven't decided if it's better when it's grabbing the codes that if it's um, when it wants to grab the codes do you uh, mind blank um, do I put individualized linear actuators where essentially it can hold itself to a certain size or no I don't think that would work I think you would need the full range because you have the code plus the slide you just have to make sure that when it's sliding back the gripper for the other side doesn't go all the way into the next set of codes you need a middle ground where it can pull it back just enough that it's out of the tray but the next gripper isn't too close to the next set of codes This is the mount that it will need uh, for this axis. So it mounts like that. It passes the belt just above the top of the extrusion and down the middle. Uh, I would have to flip that around because the, the part that it actually needs to move is down there. So you would actually run the belt underneath. they have dimensional information for it or is that one of those gonna have to buy it and measure it and 3d model it myself kind of thing yeah it is indeed it's listed as a CO10 part
yeah. That'll be a I'll have to buy it and test it kind of poke. Now they have a tensioner for it as well. Um, Trying to sort some of these windows that I got open. Uh, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Save that one. Save that one. This extrusion would need to. Uh, well, the fact that I would be um, probably offsetting this plate, uh, probably 3D print. Yeah, I really don't want to do that. I'd want plate to plate, well, extrusion to plate. Um, but I'll definitely need an. Those should be fine to reach. The issue is the tensioner goes between that, so this would have to extend long enough for the tensioner to mount. I really hate that the tensioner for it does not have uh, any sort of knob on it. Which means you'd have to sit there and be fiddly with the darn thing.
Uh, 86 by 54 by uh, just under a millimeter. So it is this plate, okay. It's not this plate. Oh, I can use that. It's more expensive. Tensioner, yes. No. A thousand this is what I'm designing for. Predicting that about two or three of these gantries would be built. I know I can go, I should be able to go eight wide with size constraints. Should be able to go eight wide, then it's a matter of height. Uh, actually, yeah, so eight wide. Um, let's say set the height at max 20 millimeters so 20 millimeters code oh. 
it wouldn't even <laughs> need to be that tall um, because if it was 20 millimeters and I did 10 codes in height that's 200 millimeters in height which is not a lot um, so you did that's 10 codes that's 10 times 8 so that's 80 codes that's 160 codes for 200 millimeters in height yeah honestly it's probably gonna be closer to 10 millimeters um, so let's see um, 10 millimeters times 20 codes that's 200 millimeters in height uh, let's say I went to 400 in height so that's 40 codes 40 times 8 is 320 times 2 that's 640 codes yeah and then that'd be 100 times 8 so that's 800 codes uh, on one side and then the gantry is double so that's 1600 codes on one gantry which in my opinion that'd be way too many uh, you'd be asking in my opinion I'd be looking at too much um, because you'd be trying to push your acceleration limits uh, now granted you're not going as wide but you'd be going fairly tall um, and I feel like you'd be pushing your uh, your luck trying to go a full meter in height plus accounting for the fact that I can get extrusion in the one meter length but there's a lot of dead space so I wouldn't want to go the full meter I'd want to be able to stay under it so that if I need a piece that's a meter it still meets requirements I, I don't like trying to screw uh, pieces of extrusion together um, so yeah I'd probably I'd probably stay at the 600 mark to be honest yeah 10 wide would be too much in my opinion because I gotta account for the fact that it all has to fit in a machine and ideally I want to design the machine so that um, uh, uh, I want to design the machine so that I can grab stuff out of it so I'm thinking minimum there's going to be two gantries um, so in terms of grabbing a code out all it really has to do is go up grab the code drop it back on the conveyor belt and the conveyor belt just leads it right out to a chute um, so it uh, dispensing out codes is actually the easier thing I think it's the loading and whatnot that's going to take longer Now, with the fact I'm using a large plate, I'd be half tempted to use this same tension on it. Yeah. Well, you just have to wait your turn. Which, granted, in Christmas time that happens. But that happens even without, um,. Even with the manual process, just with the manual process, the difference is that um, uh, we call it uh, the the staff are coming asking for codes, but they a don't know how many are left, and they don't know what's currently available. Whereas as things get loaded in the machine, the website can automatically update and tell staff exactly what codes are available and what denominations are available in whatever code
Yeah. The loading will definitely be slower. So the, the loading would go such that um, you, on the screen you would select what uh, you would pre typically we I already did that we would pre sort what the values were uh, not the values but the um, the brand um, and then uh, we would make note of the, the a number on them uh, typically we'll put a, our own sticker on it was just easier uh, to put our own sticker on it um, so that you could uh, um, know which number the code was but in the machine I'll just use the magnetic stripe or barcode that's on it because it's just many times simpler than putting your own label on um, and then so as it goes into the machine you would simply uh, select oh I'm about to input a bunch of local supermarket codes select that brand on the screen and then you imp uh, tell it which denomination it is so typically for some donations most of them are the same denomination so you could select it's this amount and then just input the code and you could change it or you could put more in uh, multiple yeah so what you would do on the website is so multiple people will, or, um, so one person might get multiple codes but be giving them to multiple people um, well, multiple clients, not multiple workers. So one worker might, uh, some workers have many, many individuals on their caseload, so they would go and um, uh, on the website and select, say, the common thing I've seen is anywhere between two or four codes for one person, uh, but it tends to come down to what the denomination on them is. Um, like if you're getting a bunch of ten dollar codes you might get more uh, and so on and so forth but um, they would uh, um, you would uh, um, when you're selecting them on the website for approval from a supervisor you would group them um, for who they're going to kind of thing so you'd group a few codes group another set of codes and then they can be approved uh, and the reason for the grouping is that the thermal printer would then print off a receipt with those groupings and then uh, this is something that used to be done manually uh, they would have a paper code and fill out what the codes were and then have the client sign off that yes I did get the codes Um, uh, so the size of this machine is so it's going to be a standalone stand up machine um, part of the reason for it is it I'm also going to use it as double duty and have the lower section of it house a UPS and the server that everything else is running on um, so I don't really want to build more than one machine uh, and have to try and keep track of it all. Uh, it's part of the reason for having multiple gantry sets is that potentially if one gantry isn't working, assuming that the gantry isn't stuck blocking the, uh, the conveyor belt, um, then you could potentially just be moving things to the second set. Um, but if it's broke broke, then I'll be coming to look at it one way or another. So, yeah. But uh, the thing I'm realizing with this is I am tempted to cheat. Um, I'm tempted to use this tensioner on here and have it pull here. But I have a feeling it's going to function better with the belt here. My right wrong because <laughs> the, uh, the I can find an, uh, a tensioner like that that can mount uh, there would be fine. Um, just the the so the one motor that I found is this one. Um, so that's the 
motor assembly, uh, which allows the belt to do that. Uh, so that's the tensioner. But in order to tension it, you gotta undo the four bolts and slide it. That'd be an option. So that it's not fully blocking it. Um, yeah. Because the whole reason for having that longer conveyor go, um, lengthwise is the fact that if I needed to expand the machine to have more capacity, it's not hard to change it. Oh, and you made a comment about acrylic. Yes, I do plan on, uh, having uh, an acrylic assembly, uh, for some of it where I can fit it. Um, just because, yeah, I realized it's going to be an engineering awesomeness and kind of want to show it off. Um, let's... um, yeah, the other thing I had thought of was that you have, um, the conv you have a spot where the code sits for the conveyor to come pick it up, but you do, um, almost like a ramp so that the conveyor can move up and down. Um, but I think it's just too much unnecessary complexity. I'd rather just a continuous conveyor maybe broken into sections based on belt length. Um, but essentially it just moves all the way along. But it would have to be sections because, uh, if the code is going on this side of the gantry, then the code will come here, stop. Gantry comes in, grabs it, moves it over. Uh, if you want to load on this side, then the code has to come all the way over here, stop. Gantry comes into position, grabs it, and moves it. So, loading will, no matter how you do it, um... Uh, so if you're standing in front of the machine, you'd be looking at it like this. Codes would be mounted here and here. I found more than one actually. Uh, that one's real beefy, but I think it's overkill. But I found one that uh, has the knob for adjusting tension on the belt. Uh, what's that one? Ooh. Oh, that's for 4040. Yeah, no, that's what I want. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at me problem solving. Cool. Uh, this way? So that you would always be staring at it? The problem with that is then, um, while it makes inserting the code easier, you run out of depth. So, when you're in, standing in front of the machine, you'd be staring at it like this. And then the code storage sits next to it. Um, and then, so that's what's dictating my length. Um, well, depth of the overall machine. So, uh, let me see if I can hand draw this. Uh, let's see. So, like you'd have your main conveyor belt, your storage, and then those are the towers. Um, so the, 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 the overall machine um, would be like this. 
um, so your code storage is going along the depth of the machine so the user looks at a screen that's here uh, there'd be an input slot and there'd be a slot where all your codes get dumped out um, and so as you're inputting them it's getting scanned and logged and then dropped on the conveyor belt and then each gantry is coming and grabbing them and putting them into a designated slot but at least with this method if you need more space you just build onto the machine So, yeah, so when you're standing in front of the machine, this is what you see. When you're looking at it from the side of the machine, you would see that. Well, you'd see the code storage in your way. Which, honestly, the code storage would probably block some of your view if the panel was acrylic. Hmm. Granted, I, uh, I recently learned my local library has a laser cutter, and I've used it a few times already. Maybe make the storage out of uh, laser cut acrylic. <laughs> That'd be fun. Okay, so don't have a model for these tensioners, but uh, I can always uh, order it and three D model it myself. I'm gonna have to because I would need all the measurements for the final thing uh, but this is just to help me figure out what parts I'm gonna need um, the other thing I need is I need to set up the tie-ins at the top the bottom the conveyor belt and the motor down here How did I want to do this? Um, thinking piece of 2020 that comes along is it going to be 2020? yeah I think I'll use 2020 so that I have space underneath it for the conveyor belt and that way the rod that runs through here is partially protected but then you have 2020 attached on the outskirts which will give it height off anything that it's sitting on uh, let's see here There's a reason I want to go um, 20, 40 in a minute. Uh, give me a minute here. Um,
maybe I'm wrong. Um, The big thing I'm trying to make space for is the um, the pulley system. Um, so the motor needs to sit there, and there's a few options for these. Load with that one. And there's another one. this one as well. This is, yeah, I'm, I want to get the uh, setup for this motor assembly in place uh, before I figure out. I have a feeling I'm not going to have this 2020 here. I'll branch off of this first because I want bearings in here. I'll probably 3D print an assembly to hold some bearings. So this will almost end up floating slightly, maybe. We'll see. Um, let's add in these. So there's two options for these motor plates. Um, something I can load up as well. This is what I was looking at. Let's 
Let's see if I can find. Is a really generic one. Uh, solar pope, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so you can use that one. That doesn't have the format. That should work. Let's upload this. Okay, so we can insert the coupler. Let's move this into position. Help me align this. Do that. Now, ideally, I'd want space, build a 3D print to hold a bearing. Shaft comes all the way through, connects to this, motor connects to that. Uh, you have your gear here belt goes up and down. I think that's centered. Not bad. And so probably needs to be further to the right, but um, 
Let's add, so there's two motor plates. Yeah, this plate, which is for 2040 mounted like this, just rotate it. Um, and then I have a similar plate, but it's for 2020. Um, Correct. There'll be one shaft going the whole length. So I might even put a bearing halfway through it. Can I even get a shaft that long? Ooh, I should double check that. I got this idea from another machine that does the same, well, it does a similar thing, but it doesn't do it for vertical, it does it for, um, your y-axis. Thought it'd be a very straightforward way of doing vertical control. All the way up to 1100 millimeters. It's on the pricey side, but it's not too bad to be honest. Uh, it's $44, $4 shipping. But yeah, if I do the full, because uh, essentially this would end up. Uh, double the length. Um, that would probably end up with a couple bearings in it to support it. Put this. So this has to get rethought. Nice. 
I'm pretty much hoping that this should be stable enough that if you lost the one belt on the one side, it should still work. I wonder if there's a way you could put um, a sensor in to know if a belt broke. I don't think there would be. At least nothing simple. Yeah. Both of those can work, but it's still a little complex. So the plan for, uh, let's see here, let's save that for later. This is the really seven millimeter version. <laughs> That'd be uh, kind of scary.
Yep, yep, it would. Thinking, I'm gonna need to just load up this uh, step remote and make some manual modifications. Uh, plan to use two different size step motors. What's this idea? The, so the only reason I was thinking no to suction, because I asked it in a, a group that I'm in, um, is one, the potential for liability, leaks, that kind of stuff, but also the space between cards. If you give it enough space between cards, sure, you can go in there with a suction, pick it up, no problem. But, uh, yeah... It definitely make it easier in terms of dropping it on the conveyor uh, because you don't have to get the gripper out of the way because um, you would essentially need the conveyor to start moving while the gripper has opened so that pulls the code well actually you need to go both ways because if you're offloading the one side you need it to move it away from the claw so the claw can move out of the way Whereas if it was suction, it would always be out of the way. Um, it'd be worth testing. It really would. I think it would. Um, honestly, I think I could get away with a vacuum pump. I think I can put it in foam and whatnot and 
you wouldn't notice it, to be honest. just be a matter of making a small enough vacuum nozzle that it can reach out and grab it. Yeah, it really is. Um, so I found the nozzles. Probably go... Something... Really wide. That's 18 millimeters tall. Ooh. 15, 15 seems to be the smallest in height, yeah, so that's going to be your problem is height. Oh, and this one review mentions that they, uh, they're really, uh, tough substance. Hmm. So I'd probably have to find a different supplier than the listing I'm currently looking at. probably get away with that. Um, I have flexible filament. I could probably make a gasket for it. Oh, mm, uh, You'd have to really test that. Because um, you look at something like what Sion has for the, uh, the printer thing um, that essentially needs a full-on vacuum to generate enough suction on it. Obviously doing something much smaller. Um, uh, I'm not worried about power issues because it have the UPS and as soon as that gets triggered then the system is going to start preparing itself. Um, But, uh, we definitely need to test that, um, because with my printer, I have the flexible filament. If I did a print with the flexible filament for a couple of layers and then switched it, I wonder if I can get something to stick on top of it. A syringe would work too. I can test it. Um, I feel like a vacuum pump is just easier. Um, and then you add a vacuum sensor because uh, you can get those for uh, ESPs and stuff like that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the Lumen PMP uses a vacuum sensor to know um, that your vacuum's working properly. Yeah, that'd be a fun test. Hmm. 
Yeah, but it, it'd have to be tested, that's for sure. Obviously I can do it both ways, see how it would work. Now the only instance that becomes difficult is credit codes. Um, there might be times, at least with this particular client that's doing this main version of the project, um, they um, they might end up using it to st store the credit code, um, and then it can better track who has it and who had it when um, rather than keeping it in a locked office where then you're waiting for someone who has a key to set office to show up so now you're waiting around the office when you have things you need to do um, yeah because the problem with our credit card is it has raised lettering Although on some now, they're not doing the embossed lettering anymore. Uh, hmm. Yeah, either way it could be tested. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if it had holes in it, you'd be out of luck. For the simplicity... I'd be tempted to just stick to uh, um, doing a grippo. Yeah, I like the coolness of a vacuum doing it, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Trap pull back. What's the other motor I'm looking at here? Uh, let's do a 42 by 40. Uh, yeah, well, I was thinking of doing that with flexible filament. Yeah, I think I have a few of them lying around too, to be honest. Um, right, so this motor... It's gonna be 42 by 40. So, let's edit the motor. This is thirty three millimeters. And how does this work? Uh, 
probably simplify it. Oh yeah, I can simplify this model a lot. Uh, shaft is all one piece. Yeah. Good question. Um, I was mostly looking at the NEMA 17s. Um, totally forgot about the NEMA 23s. Now, why would you show me the NEMA? It's all showing me the large NEMAs. <laughs> Uh, the the absolutely massive ones, the uh, NEMA 34s. I mean, I don't need those. I'm thinking the NEMA 17 will be fine. Uh, this one is the 42 by 23, and then the other one is 42 by 40. Uh, the 23. Uh, is going to be used on uh, this one. Uh, not f well. Actually, I probably could use it for the back and forth as well. So I could use two of them: one for the back and forth, but one for the in and out. Yeah. And this one comes in a few sizes. It goes all the way up. Um, so you got 42 by 23, you got the 42 by 33, which I think is what my printer uses. Um, you got the 42 by 40, you got the 42 by 47, and then you got, yeah, 42 by 47 this is the size it goes up to. And I'm sure there's even larger ones if you go looking for it. Um, but so the 42 by 23 is one amp. Uh, Holding torque is 130 millinewtons meters, um, and then the 40 millimeter one is one and a half amps, 400 millinewtons. So yeah, should be more than enough, I think find out if it's not. Um, Actually, uh, can I do that? I'm gonna go back and cheat. Well, eh, no, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna try and use scale, <laughs> just compress it, but it's gonna throw the measurements of connectors and stuff out of whack. 
Better off to probably do the central spacer and then work around it. Yeah, it'll hold a whack, that is for sure. Um, So it's 33 and I need to get it down to 23, so I need to lose 10 millimeters off of this. Okay. Move that 10 millimeters. So that should give me. Three millimeters that I want, and the shaft I need to double check the dimensions on that. That's eighteen. A little short. Let's uh, point two five off. I will leave that alone for a moment. If I move. There we go, that works. Move one, it adjusts the ball. Uh, that's plastic. It's going to be the best way to do this. Does it even need to be there? This I probably will move. Uh, 
this one. I don't think I'm going to need it. Don't think I'll need that. Cap. Shaft. Ah, the shaft has to be edited. Uh, because it's the wrong length. This is a, it was a 33 millimeter motor and I want the correct size. Uh, I'll have to edit the other model too to ensure that it's uh, the right size because it's too short. <laughs> There we go. That's the proper size. I wonder if the motor actually has Phillips on it. Let's see if they have a photo of it. Yeah, the actual supplier of the motor has Phillips on theirs. I hate Phillips. Oh, give me a uh, Robertson or uh, Torx any day. Or Allen key. Hex bolts are nice. I mostly use hex keys. These Phillips, they're, they're too prone to breaking and stripping and being ruined. They're just cheap and terrible. The fact they've stuck around all these years is amazing. So that's done. That'll probably fit something like that. Oh, and there will be a second one.
still have to put a piece of extrusion for it. assembly for moving the picker back and forth that is definitely going to be the more unknown element I think that will be something that will probably change The other motor. Thirty three, so seven millimeters. Do that? Did they groove it? Oh yeah, they totally grooved it by hand. No. Let's not do that.
Now it's one smooth thing. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I'm just gonna finish that, and I think that's gonna be it for me tonight, too. Pretty decent progress. So, choose.